No matter what you need to find, you'll find it in Astoria. It's an unbelievable community. You name it, we have it here. You have everything about living in New York without having to live in New York. I mean, I'm, I, love, I, I, I'm, I love Astoria. I just love it. Well, the Ditmars area, to me, is the most unique part of Astoria. You could still have a house, a yard, a car. It's just more space. The one bedrooms here compared to one bedrooms in the city, are, you get a lot more. And the neighborhood is, is kind of a little more open and quiet. You have wonderful Astoria Park, which you cannot beat. Big park, running trails, places for picnicking, and a tremendous view of the city. We are very close to Manhattan. You're a hop away from Manhattan. We're right at the end of the end train, which is great because you always have a seat in the morning because it's the first stop. I can go to Midtown in 15 minutes. I can go to Upper East Side in 15 minutes. I can go to the Bronx. We're looking to see City Bike come in, and we added a ferry dock. So we're now going to have a ferry in Astoria for the first time in, I think, over 50 years. Brooklyn's a little harder. Brooklyn friends, we meet in the middle. We pick Manhattan. The story was named after John Jacob Astor, the richest man in the world at the time. They named this community after him in, in hopes of bringing more people out here and more development out here. It was originally a blue collar neighborhood, a lot of uh, factories, industrial. The Steinway Piano Factory was a very big part of Astoria. In 1870, Henry Steinway built the Steinway houses, and he built them so his workers could be close to the company where they worked. We have some other famous people, you know, Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett, very large influence in the story, yeah. Grew up right nearby here. The name was Benedito, they cut it to Bennett. A whole lot of Greek people came in the 40s and the 50s, like my parents. You know, you have that celebration of Greek culture woven into the fabric. Second largest Greek-speaking population in the world outside of Greece. When I met my wife, who was Greek, I knew how to dance a Bekiko, and uh, she didn't understand why I knew how to dance a Bekiko. I said, my lady, I, I grew up in Astoria. <laughs> but there's a very strong Asian influence, uh, Middle Eastern influence. It's a melting pot for every ethnicity. Over 25% of my district is Latino. Uh, we have one of the largest Bangladeshi populations in all of Queens right here. I mean, uh, there's a manicure place here. I think they're from Tibet. Another one is from Nepal. I mean, it's like, <laughs> where's Nepal? Where's Tibet? You know, but, but the people are here. We have Amtrak right here. People just coming into the neighborhood will say, how can you sleep at night? But if you're a longtime resident, you don't hear it anymore. Also, we have still a couple of power plants that make a lot of noise. It's almost kind of scary at times because you hold these big booms, so you don't know what exactly that is, but you're like, oh, that's, you know, they're doing some testing at the power plant. The number one reason a child in my district goes to the hospital under 14 is asthma. Those air effects are part of our neighborhood's challenges, and we've had some great successes. You know, we've seen one of the dirtiest power plants in our city's history, Paletti, torn apart and taken away. That was a huge move forward. Ditmars is booming right now. It's a lot to absorb. You know, it's definitely changing. Ditmars, three or four years ago, had hardly any kind of eating places. Now it's like one row after the other, from Japanese to Australian. Bacalhado. Here there used to be almost like a little quiet area. There is no more quiet. It's, I love it. It's like a lot of action going on. You, you stay here till 1 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning, you see tons of people coming out of the subway, tons of people from the bus stop everywhere. More bars, more noise, more young people. I wonder about that. Even in the 18 months that we've lived here, a couple of the smaller businesses have kind of gone, gone out of business. 
The demographics have changed. Many Manhattanites have moved into Astoria. The prices are going up, uh, but they're not uh, reaching uh, Brooklyn uh, Heights uh, numbers. We're not reaching Upper East Side numbers, and we're still able to offer a lot more. I think that in 10 years, really in 15 years, this neighborhood will be completely different. It is a middle class neighborhood, but gradually upper middle class is coming in and they're the ones who are driving up the home prices. What will make me leave Astoria? Nothing. You could not give me a million dollar home. I says, no, thank you. You keep the house, I'd rather stay in Astoria. Yeah, it's the best place to live. Not a good place, it's the best place to live. This is the thing with Astoria. We love it, it's a good community, and you can bury me in my garden in the back.